It is commonly suggested that sleep is an important component of the muscle growth cycle. If we don't sleep well, we may not be maximizing our potential muscle growth, or even worse, we may be at risk of muscle loss. Does this have any truth behind it? And if so, what influence does sleep or loss of sleep have on muscle growth? How many hours per night should we sleep? In this video, we will try to answer some of these questions. First, we need to briefly define what makes sleep good or bad. Well, essentially there are two components that contribute to our sleep state. We have both sleep quantity and quality. Sleep quantity is simply how much total sleep we get per night. This is usually defined by the time you first fall asleep to the time that you last wake up in the morning. According to most global health organizations, it is recommended that most adults should acquire around seven to nine hours of sleep per night for healthy function. Sleep quality, on the other hand, refers to how well the person slept during this time in bed. There are multiple different factors which contribute to sleep quality, including sleep efficiency, sleep continuity, sleep timing, sleep onset latency, and subjective sleep satisfaction. So without getting into too much detail, our sleep state is essentially influenced by both quantity and quality. So now that we understand the basics of sleep, how does this influence muscle growth? Well, unfortunately, we don't actually have any solid evidence on this topic. To my knowledge, there are no studies which directly explore the effects of sleep on muscle growth through resistance training. However, we do have some indirect evidence that we can make inferences from. The only real evidence we have for the effects of sleep on muscle growth is cross-sectional studies. This refers to information taken from a group of people and analyzing the data without an actual intervention. For example, this study analyzed data from a sample of around 1,200 older men. The researchers collected data on sleep duration and performed DEXA scans on them, which is basically an ultra accurate measurement of body composition. Surprisingly, it was found that there was no real correlation with sleep duration and muscle mass. However, the general outcomes show that very low sleep durations, so less than around five hours per night, and very long sleep durations, so greater than around nine hours per night, seem to be correlated with slightly lower levels of muscle mass. Whereas a moderate sleep duration, so around five to nine hours per night, was associated with the highest levels of muscle mass. However, we have to be cautious when interpreting this research because this is a cross-sectional analysis, not an actual trial. So we don't know if these findings are actually causative of sleep or if they are just a result of other factors which also influence sleep. Furthermore, this was a study conducted in older men who aren't necessarily performing resistance training, which is less relevant to the younger population aiming to maximize muscle growth. So it is still not clear if sleep duration influences muscle mass to any significant extent. However, to paint a clearer picture, we can also look at how sleep influences some of the mechanisms which could potentially contribute to muscle growth. Let's now explore what other mechanisms may be influenced by sleep and how they may impact muscle growth. First is lifting performance. While data is limited on the effects of sleep on hypertrophy outcomes directly, we do have direct evidence on its effects of strength. First, let's look at this study, which explored the effects of sleep loss on weightlifting performance. Nine national level weightlifters performed a typical weightlifting session, including multiple sets of the snatch, clean and jerk, and front squat exercises before and after 24 hours of sleep restriction. It was found that surprisingly, lifting performance was unaffected. Both maximal strength and total volume load of the session was no different compared with training in a well-slept state. This study suggests that a single night of sleep restriction, or complete sleep deprivation in this case, doesn't seem to have any effect on lifting performance in the short term. However, the effects of chronic sleep loss may have different effects on performance. This study explored the effects of three consecutive nights of sleep restriction on maximal lifting performance. Subjects were only allowed three hours of sleep per night for three nights in a row. One RM strength of the deadlift, leg press, bench press, and bicep curl was tested before and on each consecutive day of sleep restriction. This was compared to baseline strength testing that was conducted prior to the sleep restriction protocol. It was found that 1RM strength on all lifts progressively deteriorated throughout the sleep restriction protocol. There were no significant effects on 1RM after one night of reduced sleep, but each consecutive day after this, there were significant deteriorations in strength compared with lifting in a well-rested state. This graph shows results for the leg press only, but all the other lifts followed a similar pattern. So it seems that a single night of poor sleep or no sleep at all 
doesn't seem to have a significant impact on lifting performance. However, long-term sleep loss does seem to have a major impact on maximal strength. Although we are extrapolating here, this may potentially impact hypertrophy gains. If we are chronically limiting sleep, it may inhibit maximal strength, rep performance, and volume load of the training sessions. This may provide a less hypertrophic stimulus and could potentially result in inferior muscle growth compared with training in a well-rested state. The second potential mechanism that may be influenced by sleep is hormones or the endocrine system. Although blood hormone markers are not directly associated with hypertrophy outcomes, changes in hormone markers can be used as general indicators of anabolic and catabolic activity. This research review analyzed the evidence on sleep loss and its impacts on anabolic and catabolic hormones. The researchers concluded that sleep loss tends to decrease anabolic hormones and increase catabolic hormones. This is theorized to decrease rates of muscle protein synthesis and increase muscle protein breakdown. As a result, this is theorized to result in a less anabolic state, decreasing our likelihood of muscle growth with resistance training and potentially increasing our risk of muscle loss. While this provides more evidence supporting sleep, we also need to be careful when extrapolating this data too. Remember, these are indirect pathways, not direct measures of hypertrophy outcomes. And the last potential indirect mechanism that can be influenced by sleep is effort and motivation. This is probably where sleep has the biggest impact. Going back to the previous study on weightlifters, the researchers also recorded mood states of the athletes. It was found that 24 hours of sleep restriction resulted in elevated anger, confusion, tension, fatigue, depression, and sleepiness during their training session compared with training in a well-rested state. Furthermore, this study explored the effects of sleep restriction on changes in various different mood states. The researchers took healthy adults who habitually slept well for 7-9 to nine hours per night and restricted their sleep to 6 hours for 10 consecutive nights. It was found that perceived fatigue, anxiety and mood disturbances were all significantly elevated compared with a control group who continued sleeping regularly. I don't think we really need research to understand this concept either. I think we can all relate to our overall mood being poorer when our sleep quality or quantity is reduced. Although this may not have a significant physiological effect, it may certainly inhibit our training sessions. If we are tired, demotivated, and have poor concentration in the gym, our training sessions are likely to be less effective. We may not push as hard as we otherwise would, or we may not concentrate on executing our technique well. This may overall inhibit the hypertrophic stimulus and result in poorer gains over time. So to conclude this video, let's establish some practical recommendations. First, it is not yet clear how sleep influences hypertrophy directly. We can't conclusively say that inhibited sleep reduces hypertrophy outcomes or that better sleep promotes hypertrophy. However, we do have evidence that sleep may affect hypertrophy through indirect mechanisms. Sleep deprivation seems to negatively impact lifting performance, acute hormone responses, and overall mood. These negative effects may not be very apparent after one night of inhibited sleep, but they seem to be exacerbated from chronic sleep deprivation. As a result of poor sleep, these factors may potentially contribute to inhibited hypertrophy outcomes in the long term. So as a practical recommendation, trainees should probably try to sleep a healthy amount, around 7-9 to nine hours per night for healthy adults as recommended by most health organizations. A single night of poor sleep is probably not going to influence performance or hypertrophy outcomes to any meaningful extent, but chronic sleep deprivation could. If you do have a poor night of sleep and you need to train the following day, some acute motivation strategies may be helpful like ingesting caffeine before your session or listening to your favourite music. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.